What's up, guys? Texas Fan of Rehab here, man. Bringing it back with another weekly recap. Hey, let's jump into it, man. Oh, real quick. Uh, if you like the content, man, give me a like. Give me a follow. I appreciate the subscribers that have already joined. We are almost to 90, man. Hey, I know that that's a small number for some, but it's a big number to me, man. So much love to everybody that's joined to the fan base, man. I can't even call you fan base. You family at this point in time, man. We all fans. It's Houston Texans fans, so we keep it to that fan base, not fan of mine. I don't think it, I don't think I have fans like that. But anyway, man, I appreciate you subscribing. I appreciate you checking in, and man, if you could tell a friend, tell a fan, man. Let's go ahead, just jump into it, man. I want to start with something different. We're gonna do the question of the week, and so this week's question of the week is: Who's your favorite free agent acquisition of the Houston Texans all time? And if I got to think back to it, man, if I had to pick, let's see, I'm probably going to go with J. Joe. Um, J. Joe was one that he came from Cincinnati. This was under Rick Smith. Uh, it was pretty dope when we got him because as far as I recall, we were had we had the opportunity to go after uh, Namdi Asunwa. And um, Namdi was the dude at the time, man. I mean, he was on par with Rivas Island uh, overall as far as what the, the speculation was. But I think we chose the right guy, man. J. Joe crafted out a nice long uh, run here with the Texans, man. He was very productive, uh, very productive on the defense. I mean, um, just off the top of my head, man, I'm remembering him running back touchdowns, uh, interceptions for touchdowns and stuff like that, just, you know, having a flashback real quick as a Texas fan, man. Um, but, yeah, J. Joe is my pick, man. So tell me in the comment section, man, who's your pick, man? Who's the free agent pick that you guys enjoyed the most, man? So let's get into it for this look back, man. So uh, OTA started this week, man, on-field training activities or on-field team activities, either one, whatever. Um, this was our first chance to get a look at the team as a whole. Uh, everybody showed up, man. So it's, it's not like the voluntary moments or whatever. But anyway, um, everybody gets the opportunity to get out on the field. You go through your drills. You go through your um, your walkthroughs and all of that stuff. Um, this is the first opportunity for the coaches, again, to get acclimated to the players. Um, outside of strength training, they've been doing strength training the whole time. So uh, this gives them a chance to, you know, do some quick installs and stuff like that. No contact, no hitting, none of that stuff there. But, you know, they get to figure out, you know, what they have on the field, what the team actually looks like. Um, get a little bit of mentorship and coaching going on. Uh, you know, again, it's like having a family reunion almost, man, where you got people coming from all over and it's the first time that they get to meet up and kind of uh, make notes between each other, man. So it's kind of dope. Um, OTAs, I believe, is supposed to be, I think it's three or four weeks worth of OTAs. Uh, so this is the first week that they had. And, you know, videos have been coming out. The, the coolest part about OTAs has been there's been a lot of interviews to go on this week. And so you've heard from everybody pretty much. Um, you know, C.J. Stroud, you've heard from um, Davis Mills, you've heard from, and we'll get into Davis Mills a little bit later, but you've heard from uh, the coaches, you've heard from the defensive players, you've heard from a little bit of everybody. It's kind of like the whole welcome back moment. Uh, the, 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 the players get to meet the media, the media get to relay the message back to the fans. Um, you even have a couple of video clips that's made it out, but from what I can tell, the Texans have been pretty tight with the video that's been exposed. Um, I don't know what's the parameters behind that. I wouldn't call it, um, I wouldn't call it against the grain. It's probably status quo for what, what they want to have, uh, revealed. I'm sure they don't want a whole lot of the early stuff out there. Um, that could be picked up for other teams to consume. So, you know, it's okay right now, guys, if you don't see a whole lot of information or you don't see a whole lot of videos coming out of the Texans. That, we just early, man. It's, you know, it's, it, it, this is that part of the season where we're at, man. So as we progress and we get a little further down into the into the mix, you'll start to see a lot more information, a lot more videos, especially come out. Because us that's covering the Texans, we definitely are looking for stuff, man. We're thirsty for stuff to cover. Uh, and, and, you know, chop stuff up and get it back out to you guys. So as soon as we get it, we'll definitely be sending it back out to you guys. So that was the first thing. Now, coming back around to Davis Mills, um, a lot of headlines this week, man. And I'll probably pop some up right there. But a lot of headlines this week talking about Davis Mills uh, refusing to mentor C.J. Stroud. And um, listen, man, I got a couple of issues with this because I heard the interview 
that Davis Mills gave when this, um, I guess they took this, this little snippet of what he said and kind of turned it on his ear and made it into something that it was not. When you, uh, you know, you ended last season as a starter, then they bring in Stroud as the second overall pick. What do you see your role as now? How much will you help him try to make the transition? Yeah, I mean, I still, I'm completing, competing for that starting job. I mean, since I've been drafted in the NFL, I've been in a competition. Um, I don't think anything's going to change, but I mean, it's been, it's been great getting to know CJ so far. He's an extremely hard worker. Um, and it'll be good to see how we go out there and compete every day and make each other better. The reality of the situation is, let's be clear, Davis Mills is fighting for the starting position, as he should, as he should. And let's be real about it, okay? Davis Mills got drafted by us. He's only been on the squad a few years. He's got the same opportunity as C.J. Stroud, and he was just the most recent starting quarterback. He was playing on a different head coach. Head coach is gone. So now he's got an opportunity to impress this head coach and show him what he can really do. Maybe the head coach just suppressed him, or maybe the head coach wasn't giving him you know, the best game plan that could, you know, utilize his skills and talents or whatever. Maybe the team just wasn't the same team and it wasn't equipped. And now he's got guys that he can toss to like Tank Dell or whoever, uh, Robert Woods and all of this stuff. Maybe there's a different uh, mode in the locker room or whatever. Anyway, it's slice it. Davis Mills is fighting for his job. And if you were in that position, you would too. So number one, I can understand the reason why Davis Mills would not want to mentor C.J. Stroud, because he doesn't necessarily see it as the writing on the wall for his exit. However, if the writing if the writing is on the wall for his exit, trust me, Davis Mills wants to get the best film on 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 camera as he can, so that any team that's going to be out there, they're trying to really come and knock the door down to come and get him, and he could potentially get a starting job somewhere else. Why wouldn't he, right? So if the last thing that you saw out of Davis Mills was him throwing a touchdown against Indy. And that looks terrible on the game plan if you're a Texas fan or whatever. But from another GM's perspective, okay, maybe you say, okay, he was willing to fight to try to get a win or whatever. But you look at that squad, man, and they had so many games that they lost overall. And it wasn't from the greatest quarterback play. It wasn't from the greatest offense calls. It wasn't from the greatest, you know, whatever. That that team was just lacking certain things. Uh, I don't want to call it a certain je ne sais quoi, but whatever. <laughs> it's, I'm being silly, man, but, um, you know, the, the Texans definitely uh, were lacking some things that weren't to Davis Mills' benefit last year. And so I think Davis should definitely take every opportunity to fight for his job. Now, that said, here's the other part of it. What the hell is he going to teach uh, C.J. Stroud about being a professional in the NFL right now? I mean, he's only got a few years on his belt himself, man. So why, what is he going to mentor him about? You know, he came from a team that wasn't winning. Like, what are you going to mentor C.J. Stroud about? Like, sure, you can teach him a few things about how to handle your money, how to be a professional, the groupies. I mean, girlfriends. Like, what? I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't get what the big deal is about this headline, man, that they're making that he refuses. He's not Aaron, uh, what was it, uh, uh, Brett Favre. Uh, refusing to mentor Aaron Rodgers type of thing. And even then, hell, he don't have to mentor him, man. He's the starting quarterback. What do you got to do to mentor the young kid? Young kid wants the job, you got to come get it. I don't, I don't think folks understand how this works, man. These jobs are very limited. There's only 32 teams out here in the country that's even got this opportunity. So uh, each of those teams has one starting quarterback. Why would you try to give that up to the other team? I'm, I'm sorry, to the other player. Why would you try to get that position up and just hand it over to him? You're not going to try to sit there and mentor this guy. Come on, man. It's ridiculous. Get out of here, man. So, anyway, <laughs> I'm going to get off my soapbox with that, man. So, um, the biggest news for this week, man, D-Hop, our boy, Nuke, got released by the Arizona Cardinals. Can you believe that? So, what you're telling me is we went through watching Bill O'Brien Give him away for basically, no, excuse me, I'm sorry. David Johnson, you are nothing, sir. I'm sorry, not, let me take that back. David Johnson, you are somebody. But to us, the value was minimal. It was very minimal, almost nothing. So I'm going to just clean that up that way. But you telling me we watched Bill O'Brien get rid of D-Hop for damn near nothing. 
and D Hop goes over in the prime of his career and has continues to flourish with Arizona, has a great, great couple of years or so. Um, then Arizona basically gets cap strapped, I believe, don't want to pay him that money that he deserves, and can't find a trading partner, a, a, a partner to trade with. And so he's priced out of the market to trade him so you can get an asset back. So you basically, you got to release him for nothing. Can't make this stuff up, man. So here's the question. <laughs> Should the Texans take a chance of trying to see about, you know, pulling D-Hop back in, bringing him back home? Should D-Hop entertain the idea of coming back home to the Texans? I'm going to tell you this. D-Hop has already been on a couple bra uh, a couple places and said that he has interest in playing with you know, some of the primetime players at quarterback. Of course, the names of, you know, Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts, um, Patrick Mahomes. You know, that just would make sense, right? Guy that's 30, 30 31, who is going into the, the, the twilight of his career, um, all things considered. I mean, he's still balling. But guy that's going into the twilight of his career, he's going to want to play for a Super Bowl. And... Can't really blame him. He hadn't had that opportunity before. I mean, but that's one of the reasons why he probably wanted to go to Arizona because he felt like Kyler Murray was going to be that guy. But if he can latch on with a with an NFL, uh, excuse me, with a Super Bowl prospect type team, I could definitely see him going to Kansas City. I could see him going to, well, I don't think they got space for him. You know, Kansas City doesn't have space for him either. They got 175 wide receivers right now. I don't know how that's going to work. But anyway... Um, being that he was released, you can restart his contract now. I mean, you can sign him for a more cap-friendly number. So I expect him to sign with a team that's not the Texans. It would be lovely for us to have him back here. Of course, the the city, the fan base didn't have any problem with Nuke, with Nuke and I'm sure that um, most of the people with the organization didn't either, but Nuke might say differently in, in regard to, um, I mean, Bill O'Brien is gone, but... You know, Cal McNair is still there, and he signed off on it. And listen, there was a whole lot of scuttlebutt about, you know, uh, Newt potentially going and signing with <laughs> or being traded to the Patriots at one point in time. I can't see it happening, man, because Bill O'Brien is there. And you can't tell me. I know Belichick is there, but you can't tell me that if Bill O'Brien is there, you're going to have these guys be on the same page and then just kumbaya like nothing happened. Uh-uh. Uh, uh I've seen D Hop go off on people and, and show that red ass before, and I say that lovingly. But I seen him show that side of himself where he's just like you know scorched earth on cats, man, and and he don't back down. So I expect that he's gonna keep that same keep that same energy at all times, man. But uh, whatever happens with D Hop, man, I wish him well. I wish him the best. I love to have him back here. Maybe he'll come back as an ambassador for the Texans at some point in time. Maybe when things cool now. I don't know, but um, we'd love to have him back. We'd love to see him back in the city, man. But I don't think he's going to come back and play for the Texans. Um, I wish him well wherever he goes, though, man. So, um, long story short, uh, week two of OTAs is going to be coming up here soon. Um, expect to get more information out of the team. Expect to see more dope interviews. Hopefully, we don't have any more twisted uh, headlines to come out of the organization. Um I can't see us making a whole lot of free agent moves because I think I said before that this is like shopping in the five dollar bin at Walmart for, you know, the dope uh, DVD. <laughs> I mean, people don't really even watch DVDs anymore, but that's neither here nor there. Um, I just think we're at the point of the season where, if you have a guy that gets released like D Hop, it's just a one in a million circumstance. It's a unicorn that's out there. Um, most of these guys is going to be changing teams at this point in time. It's cap related or it's, I don't know, something else or whatever. But don't expect a whole lot of that to be going on with the Texans. Um, just, you know, pump your brakes on that. What we have currently is probably going to be the design of the team that we're going to have moving forward. Um, there may be a guy or two, but most of those guys are going to be depth pickups and, and uh, those type of transactions, like I said, with Sha Shaquille, Gri uh, Shaquille Griffin. Um, so, you know, this is the squad that we got, man. So what we need to do right now is pray for health, pray for the, these guys to, to pick up and start showing some things on the field. Um, of course, look out for content from us, you know, us that cover the Texans, man. Um, that's pretty much all I got, man, on that, man. Um, 
want to hear from you though man again the question of the week is out there uh hit me up in the comment section man let's chop it up man i look forward to another good productive week man and i'll holler at y'all later texas fan and rehab i'm out